Good evening, everyone, to the ORDI Care for Rare webinar series. Today at our series, we have Dr. Arvind Sharma, a renowned neurologist, and uh, we have with us Amit, our RD advocate at ORDI. Amit is himself an MS warrior, and he's an entrepreneur and a blogger. He works uh, relentlessly for the awareness of MS, and we're really very proud of him. And uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, the team of ORDI, Swami sir, Prasanna sir, everyone for taking this initiative. I hope uh, this helps a lot of MS families and uh, doctors and researchers involved in it. A uh, very warm welcome, Dr. Arvind. Um, thank you. I request you to take in from here. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you, Sopna. Thank you, Mr. Prasanna ji and Amit. Uh, who, yeah, who's the yeah absolutely uh, MS warrior who's taking things. Recently, we published a, a paper. In the paper, we got the story of Amit also. Yeah. So let us go to the. If we are all set, let us have the presentation. Right? Should I share the slides? Sir, Amit would like to. I'll just give. You. Yeah, I'll okay. just uh, give a brief. Uh, yeah. So I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in March of 2018. And uh, Dr. Arvind Sharma, the chief neurologist of uh, Zytus Hospital, who is the one who diagnosed me with this. And I've been under medication from his side. I thank him from taking, uh, for taking time out from his busy schedule to impart this knowledge to us. And also all the participants to logging in also, I'd like to uh, mention uh, Lifefield Diagnostics, who has sponsored this event. So from here, I would request Dr. Arvind Sharma to take this forward. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you very much for those kind words. But uh, it has always been said that doctor gives the treatment. It is how the, uh, the person who's taking the treatment respond to it. And you are the one person who takes the things very positively. And that is what matters for any disease happening to anyone, even it's me or anyone, it, and Amit has taken it wonderfully. And the, the most important thing that is spreading the awareness across India, across world, he's connecting to the people. And we are thinking that we should make a, a MS Summit group with Amit yeah, taking as a lead, and I will definitely help him to do that. So before we do such uh, national or international thing, we should go to the talk, right? And I've been I've been told that uh, I'll just share my slides, and I'll just request Prasanna ji to tell me that uh, the slides are up and about or not. They are there, Amit. You can see them. Yeah, why? Is I guess perfect. Perfect. perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you. So uh, as we go for the talk. Uh, I have been informed that uh, there are people who are from different background. Uh, there are MS warriors, there are um, uh, warriors relative, there are doctors, different group is there. And I would, at the outset, I would really like to thank the organization for the rare disease of India to give me this opportunity to interact with you and I definitely love to do more. So we go to the, uh, directly to the talk i have to stream to you to the end of ms and how to live with it learn to fight before we do that we we share some important information about ms so i'll try to go to the next slide okay it got stuck okay uh-huh i'm trying the next slide Okay, so uh, so one invisible organism has shut the whole world. But as we said about uh, you are dealing with the uh, organization of rare diseases, when the lockdown happens or anything which is very rare happen, it does not depend on that virus or anything. It depends on what you are. So it is the most important thing we should know. And if you go with the history of MS, it is 19th century, if you see uh, Jean Martin Charcot in 1825 to 1893, it's long back, he described about the MS. And Amit can share his experience that for two years, he was struggling for his diagnosis 
and that is what is lacking. MS is not a rare disease. It's a disease which is common, but as we don't diagnose it, we make it rare. So that is how you make the disease rare. If you don't look for it, you don't treat it, don't treat it early, and you diagnose it late, and it is very important to diagnose it early. So multiple sclerosis, how the name has come, right? It is the main in a, in a language where there are not much doctors on the platform. I would like you to let you know that it affects the myelin. Myelin is the protective covering of our brain and the spinal cord. In the brain, it is covered with a myelin known as the Schwann cells and in the uh, as a oligodendrocyte, oligodendrocytes and in the periphery, the nerves are covered by the Schwann cells. So uh, MS, that is the Krogner progressive demyelinating disease is an immune mediated disorder. Several factors are believed to trigger MS, but exact cause is not known, but we'll discuss what the uh, whenever we talk about multiple sclerosis, it is like uh, it's an autoimmune disease. There are multiple factors which are triggering in. So before we go further, multiple sclerosis, the short form MS, when you tell to the general physician or to a uh, doctor who is practicing medicine, you tell MS, he will first thing he will say mitral stenosis. He will not say multiple sclerosis. So by this talk, we want to increase the awareness more and more about multiple sclerosis. MS is not only mitral stenosis. For neurology, it is multiple sclerosis, which is very important. About a million people worldwide suffer with it. It is a disease of young. I would like to emphasize it is the most productive and reproductive age group where people suffer a disease and they have a challenge with their jobs. We'll discuss about all that in the subsequent slides and it affects more women than men. And there are three components as I was discussing that it disrupts your myelin in the brain and the spinal cord, and it has a three components that is inflammation, demyelination, and axonal loss. And as we discuss these three components, we like to act at inflammation, not at the level of axonal loss where we cannot do anything. So we have to diagnose it early. So if you see the epidemiology of MS in India, near about uh, 5 to 10 for 100,000 individuals, and it is a good amount of number if you see across India. And as I have done my DM from PGI, the Sindh area, you used to see a lot of MS, and MS was not considered as a rare disease there. The first point, whenever you see the symptoms, which we discuss further, you try to diagnose that disease. More prevalent in female subjects, 25 to 30 years, which is the peak, and the clinical features are similar of MS across world, what their sim symptoms are. So MS burden is underestimated in India, no doubt in that. So if you see the prevalence uh, rate in India is one case per 100,000 to three case per 100,000. So uh, the, the prevalence in 2018, it was five to 20 per 100,000. As we are moving more and more uh, coming to 2020, which nobody wants to remember, but still, if we go more after 2020, we'll diagnose more people are more aware about the MS. So what causes MS? As we were discussing in before, it is the genetic predisposition or the environmental trigger or the autoimmunity. Your own immunity is killing your myelin fibers and they're causing the loss of myelin and the nerve fibers. There is a complex heterogeneous process which occur in multiple sclerosis, which is responsible to that. Still, the research is going at the genetic level and different level. We'll talk about how much percentage of that suffers in the subsequent slide. This is a very simplified way I can explain you because I know that is a heterogeneous group where, to whom to I'm speaking to. So if you see that um, MS, there is an activated, you know, whenever there is a disease, our white blood cells, uh, there are T cells, there are B cells. So activated T cells, they, they, they become their own immune system start attacking our own cells and they cross the blood brain barrier and launch an attack on myelin and nerve fibers to obstruct the nerve signal. You know the myelin, how the myelin help? Myelin, if the myelin is gone away, it is a protective phenomenon of our nerves and the brain cells. So our process becomes slow. We become weak on the side where the things are affected. So if it is affecting the eye, you lose eye vision. If it's affecting on the one side of the left side, you can have the upper limb and the lower limb weakness of the opposite side because the left side covers the right side of your arm and leg. 
and the myelin fibers when they get disrupted you can have uh, these symptoms so this is how it looks myelin looks there is a myelin there you can see the dendrites you can see the synapses you can see a whole exome there if i could put an arrow and this is what the node of renewer is and this is how the signal jump because of the sodium and potassium uh, migrating from the nerve cells here it jumps fast and that is why we are able to think fast we are able to do things fast because of the myelin and the nerve fibers it get disrupted further if you can see uh, in this on the left hand side so how you define it is characterized by the acute inflammation demyelination axonal loss and brain atrophy subsequently it happens to be a brain atrophy but you see whenever there is inflammation our body has a natural tendency to protect it so that is a regeneration even in the brain it is like this so that is why the the type are different types of ms the most common is the relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis where you regenerate again and your whole symptoms passes away and you again back to normal but relapsing remitting also convert to secondary progressive when i show you the all the four types of multiple sclerosis the regeneration not every time happens complete and ultimately you land up to have a destruction so inflammation regeneration and destruction so if you see it is the short circuit happens in the brain uh, where the myelin sheath is affected and the lot that is same inflammation demyelination external loss is there so many many ms subject ms warriors i will not tell patient in my talk i don't want to use that word so many of them come you see this slide they come and they say you tell me that my mri is showing so many lesion but i have only have numbness in on my lips and the face and only slight weakness in my hand why it is like this so see this slide very particularly that whenever there is an attack on ms there are elocant areas and the non elocant areas in the brain and if you see these areas when they are not affecting the nerve fibers which are going there which are particularly elocant areas for your functions like writing fine hand movements your speaking your speech slurred speech your facial deviation your vision your back the small brain which nana patek recalls is chota magaj where the coordination is there so if it is not affected there are a lot of spots seen in the brain which you can see in the square but it happens more then your bulb that is the brain start getting fused so these are the disruptive lesions lead to the clinical symptoms and sign that is known as the clinical attack and as you see i have pointed with the red arrow those are the disruptive otherwise it affects the non elocent areas you don't have much problem but when cumulatively they form they form ultimately a atrophy of the brain and which leads to ultimately uh, your cognitive decline where you start losing your memory also chronic progressive autoimmune disease now as we discuss we will describe it more it's a chronic progressive autoimmune disease of the brain it affects different range of neurological functions and it worsen with each relapse definitely there are genetic and environmental factors which are there what i want to know everyone is ms is not contagious this has to un understand everyone understand that it is not directly inherited always it is not severe don't see guru and see vidya balan in that and see ms is very bad it is not like this ms people i have seen in my practice from last 25 years without any dmds they took dmds for 2 years and they are doing very well it is fatal in extremely rare circumstances if you take it very systematically and you know about the disease and you are aware about it and you uh, go to the doctor at the right time see even it's true for the heart or any other disease any leukemias any rare disease where if you identify it fast it helps you to treat that patient best diagnosed ms is not reason that uh, people are you should not there is no reason to stop working stop doing things that you enjoy and not have children that is totally i have i have my my warriors who are having two kids one kid living wonderful life there are brighter side there are negative side but if you live a life if you have not suffered an ms you will suffer a blood pressure you will suffer a hair loss which i don't have at the age of 47 years you may be laughing i cannot see you but that is true everyone has to go through the process of life right so 
but disease are bad, but you should know how to treat it. They're usually diagnosed between 20 to 50, occasionally diagnosed in the young children and older adults, as we already discussed about the women and men. It more occurred in the temperate areas that are the more colder areas. That is why the prevalence and incidence in the tropical areas is not much. But I tell you, the way our population is, we are diagnosing only 10% of MS in India what the West is doing because they are very aware, they know that this, is, this disease can happen to us, so they diagnose it very early and which is very important. Don't think that we don't have it. We have a less percentage, but we don't diagnose it. That is the most important part. So we have areas where the cold temperature are there. So that is why we tell our MS warriors not to go to an extreme temperature because that may exhibit, that may cause relapse that is more than 40 degree and less than two degree, what we are talking of. So no, the, the need to manage the burden of MS, you need not to carry that on your shoulder. You should be more wise. And what you should know about the progressive disabling, and this is not an absolute figure, don't go into it. This is made by, by doing a lot of trials in the uh, all the MS patients, MS warriors, and this has been uh, taken in that format, normal, we do a European disability status scale, that is EDSS. We want our every MS warrior to be zero, uh, no disability, even minimal disability sometimes is okay, but we don't want above six. That is the median time to the onset of the required assistance to walk was found in 20 years if they are not treated, the relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Restricted to wheelchair, big no, that seven, eight, nine, ten, no, not a single neurologist want that. They all want their patient to be less than six, and they want from zero to three, maximum to all the uh, MS warriors. So, if you think that in another twenty years you're going to be on wheelchair, what that mean? Nobody knows you are having MS, but nobody, other person who is treating you or the other person, he also don't know. What's going to happen? So worry is interest paid before it's due. So that is the most important and key takeaway from this talk, which we should know if the if there are MS warrior and their relatives are there in this talk. Hallmark of MS, it is unpredictable because one third has very mild course. One third will have a moderate course and one third become more disabled. Certain characteristics predict a better outcome, female, less than 35 years, and maximum are less than 35 years. More the age, and if you suffer MS, then they have a progressive course. If you have a sensory symptoms, they are more like a paroxysmal symptoms, monofocal than the multifocal attempt, and complete recovery following a relapse have a better outcome. And Sopna, I'll definitely let you know that if you if you feel hard pressed with time, you should inform me about it. So the the type of MS, if you see, and now we discussed about it, that is relapsing remitting MS, primary progressive. I'm audible. Swapna, is it? Hello? Hello, sir, you're audible. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you very much. I was just uh, I was just saying I'm not talking to myself. Okay, thank no, you no, very sir, much. No, sir, you're very audible. Yeah, I'm not able to see you anyone, right? So so thank yeah. you very much. You you can stop me when you feel that it is becoming too long, right? Yes, sir, definitely. Yeah. We're just so, trying to be on mute so that okay. we don't disturb you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. So now we are going to Swapna going towards the type of MS, that is the relapsing remitting the MS primary progressive MS and the progressive relapsing MS and the cigarette the secondary progressive MS. The most common type is relapsing, completely recovering, then relapsing, completely recovering, then relapsing. Every time to you say relapse, 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 then completely recovering become incomplete recovering, very less recovering, very, very less recovering. That turns to be secondary progressive. So more than 70% of relapsing remitting, if you don't treat them, they go to secondary progressive MS. Eight out of 10, they are saying that they go to the secondary progressive. Primary progressive and progressive relapsing, they are very rare. So we'll not talk much about it, but this is how we make our uh, chart of four clinical patterns, relapsing remitting, most common, they convert into secondary progressive, primary progressive, less than 12% and progressive relapsing. How is the MS diagnosed? In every neurological disease, which we diagnose, the most important is medical history and clinical examination. For MS, you need few more things like radiology, laboratory diagnosis, and one specific that is visual evoke potential and BARA. 
it requires dissemination in the time and space. What do you mean by that? Space, evidence of scarring plaque in at least two separate areas of CNS space, and time evidence of that plaque occur at different point of time. So what test that make full to confirm is MS, you do a, not a simple MRI. You ask for an MRI with the MS protocol, where you do the MRI brain with orbit, with whole spine, with contrast, and uh, special images of sagittal flare. We generally don't do in MRI any radiological setup. When you do an MRI, if you're suspecting MS, always write, a sagittal cut of the flare, and here you can see the plaque. If I put my arrow, that is about the corpus callosum, which is very characteristic. This is this is the brain in the sagittal view of MRI for those who are not doctors. And this is what the brain cortex is, and here where the bridge is, where the right side of the brain is connected to the left side, that is known as corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum, if there are demyelination they show a projection which are known as, I'll let you ne next slide. They are known as the plaques, the visual level potential and the lumbar puncture V2 for the MS. Now, as we talk about more about radiology, the diagnosis were given by the McDonald. They are known as the McDonald's criteria. So what we see on MRI, if any MS warrior comes with the MRI to us, they may not have much of the symptoms or the sign. Sometimes their brain looks very bad. So they have periventricular means they are near the CSF space. They are black. They are surrounding that. They are periventricular, gestracortical, infratentorial. I told you about the chota makaj and the spinal cord. And if they are enhancing, as we discussed with our, most of the MS warriors, then when they come to follow up to us, thus we do uh, one year after one year, we do MRI if they don't have the symptoms also. And if they are all on treatment also, we do an MRI. And of brain and spinal cord and see if there is enhancement of the lesion by contrast. If there is an enhancement means disease activity is there. So that is known as the new gadolinium enhancing lesion is definitely there. Your drug is not acting or patient is not taking the drug. And this is what we were talking about. Player peri periventricular gestacortical. Periventricular gestacortical and there are different lesions in the brain. There are some are gadolinium. This is Steven gadolinium enhanced. They are enhancing. So disease activity is there. This is MRI of the head. And here I will show you the Dowson's finger. This is why it happens. The corpus callosum. Why specifically affected in MS? It is perivenular inflammation, which occurs as a Dowson's finger. And you can see very categorically. I have shown you here. And it is very pathognomic of MS. And in MRI, we see the lesion like this. They are very small in the cervical. This is the cervical lesion at the level of this is C2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are vertebra, these are discs. And this is the spinal cord, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see at C5, C6, C6, 6, 6, 7, you have a lesion. Why I'm showing you this? Because there are many other demyelinating diseases like neuromyelitis optica and the various diseases which have this, but they have the long segment myelitis. The lesion here, which you see with the arrow, they are very bigger on that. But it is not always like this, that you see the MS and you don't see the differential diagnosis. It's not always MS. There are many infections, STLV1, PML, syphilis, Lyme, are there, uh, which are affected similar like MS. NMO, which I was just speaking about, neuromyelitis optica, motor neuron disease, uh, metabolic, like vitamin B12, B12. I can see the question coming up, that burning sensation, which is very common in the B12 deficiency, um, and other vitamin deficiency, which is sometimes thought of MS, but we should not, in young patient, if it is happening again and again with the vitamin B12, you should do, rule it out. CNS lymphoma is very much similar to MS, and inflammatory, all the autoimmune diseases, like Jogren's, SLE, vasculitis, and sarcoidosis has to be ruled out before we say about the MS. What are the range of symptoms? Range and symptoms are because of the structure of the brain affected. Heart is only the muscle which contract, but brain is a fascinating organ as I'm a neurologist, I'm fascinated towards its different functions. So if you see it's a cognitive and psychiatric, if you, if you have a con cognitive or psychiatric affected, your speech is affected, attention, reasoning, depression, sometimes depression cause dementia that is known as 
pseudodementia. If it is cerebellar on the left hand side, you see you loss of balance, coordination, and vertigo. And if your eye is affected, unilateral pain, loss of vision, and general like pain, fatigue, these are very common in MS when you are a 22 year old, 32, 30 year old, and you have fatigue, it is very bad because you are full of energy, but you are so fatigued that you're not able to do the work. Tremor, temper sensitivity, and paroxysmal symptoms. Genitourinary, like bladder and the sexual dysfunctions. Elementary, impaired swallowing, constipation, bowel dysfunction, and extremities, the weakness, stiffness, numbness, and spasticity. I'll show you the cartoon, the next one, which show you how these all symptoms are coming up. This is what the sagittal view of the brain. And you, this is how you see the cognitive loss and memory is because of the cortex. They are widely incidental in severity because which part of the brain is involved. Emotional disturbance, you all know there the amygdala is, right? Optic neuritis because of the optic chiasma, visual loss, diplopia, vertigo, all goes towards the cerebellum, tremors, problem in the balance. Then you come to this is what is the pons, then the medulla, and then the spinal cord comes where all the sensory pain, proprioception, bladder dysfunction, dysarthria low if you go to the lower down. And which part of the brain is involved? It depends on that. And that is how you have the symptoms. So there are three categories of the treatment. We will discuss in the treatment in the detail, but there are underlying course of the disease that are known as the disease modifying drug. We call them, them as a in our neuroid side as a DMDs. Relapse are to be treated as an exacerbation with the acute condition where you use a steroid. We'll talk about the doses and the specific MS symptoms to be treated symptomatically. So first we'll go from the downward to upward. So first we'll talk about the relapse, how it is treated. Not all relapse require treatment, like mild sensory symptoms, which are known as the paroxysmal symptoms, some mild stiffness, they are not treated with the acute medication of the relapse. They are allowed to resolve by their own as the lesion get contracted. You improve that in that stiffness by your own. And if you do a good physiotherapy, it improves further. Relapse that interferes with the function are usually treated like visual, walking problem, disability in doing the activity. So that time you give three to five days course of IV methylprednisolone methyl without tapering of the prednisolon is more common. We don't use long-term steroids in treating the acute relapse of multiple sclerosis. It is one gram of the doses which is used for three to five days. Generally, it is five days. Then the rehabilitation and restore the mental function, maintain the function and the psychosocial support. Now, MS symptoms versus relapse, how they are different. MS symptoms are chronic ongoing indicator of the MS lesion damage in the brain, spinal cord and optic nerve like stiffness continuing, like sensory symptoms continuing. These are the MS symptoms which you have to treat symptomatically rather than pushing them to steroid again and again. MS relapses, sudden flare of the disease definitely require treatment for with the steroid and subsequently to be put on disease modifying drug. We'll talk about the duration of the disease modifying drug also, how long we should treat them. So <clears throat> why it is important to treat the MS symptoms symptomatically? Because they are very much related and interdependent, interdependent like fatigue, depression uh, goes to interrelated to the sexuality issues, then spasticity and constipation has a bladder and bowel issues, decreased sleep and decreased cognition. They're all interrelated if you don't treat them. You treat them by the drug, you treat them by the yoga, you treat them by the physiotherapy. It depends individually on the uh, MS warrior, how they are presenting. So that is why sorting out and prioritization to treat such MS symptom is very important. Not always everything is MS. A person who's growing in his age, if he has something different, look for something different also. He may be developing a blood pressure, Look for other things also, which is age related. Uh, because if you have a MS at 25 years and you are living healthily at the age of 60 years, you should not think that you are immune to all other things if you're not taking things into consideration. Any symptoms can be related to the side effect of medication. Uh, refer to the appropriate discipline as needed. The recommended approach to treat managing MS symptoms, prescription, patient education is always important. And uh, people like Amit, 
who are well aware and well well versed with their knowledge about the ms they are definitely helping us to spread the knowledge about ms and it is not coping alone which is important when you mix with the people other people who are having the similar disease and if you are coming together you make things very easy to each other and you can deal with those with the minimum amount of the drug physical activities symptom management and whenever there is a requirement you should have a specialist and if you combine all those you make a very good puzzle solved in a very easy way so now coming to the managing to the ms symptoms fatigue you can treat with cns stimulant we use a modafinil in the form of walk alert a lot fluoxetine ssri you can use sertraline there are various other medication for fatigue you have to titrate it then pain you can treat with all the anticonvulsant generally people ask us why you are giving us an anticonvulsant but we tell them the anticonvulsant sometimes are anti migrainer also they are for the neuropathic pain also the the drug which are used in neurology are used in a different purpose but the drug is same duloxetine is a drug of choice for diabetic neuropathy and it is used wonderfully in the pain for all the neuropathic pain it is a wonderful drug so cognitive decline no symptomatic medication i tell you i believe for such thing and i tell ms warriors do neurobix neurobix is like aerobix neurobix is exercise of the brain you do it in the form that the activity which you use usually do do it in a reverse manner like you are brushing your teeth with the right hand start brushing some day with the left hand do with the left hand walk backward but don't fall please so don't do unusual thing I, I i tell you i have seen uh people doing unusual things and they are coming with the fracture of the femur uh, whenever i do we are doing it virtually but when we do a ms awareness talk with uh, uh the um, ms societies i used to do a handstand do a c session doing a cartwheel because i was a gymnast so i have heard people doing a uh, uh asanas in yoga and getting their femur fractured because they were never used to do those exercises so know your body which is very important what you can do is very important you you can cross the limit but every time you cannot do the unaccustomed exercises which you are not used to do it if you are running also a marathon you have to run for few days or weeks to go to that marathon right so screen for depression neurocycle because sometimes it is a pseudo dementia it is a depression where you have a feeling that you don't remember things encourage regular exercises and the computer mediated memory exercises a newspaper like sudoku's and they all help bladder infection that's definitely we have the drug like oxybutylene and tolteridine we give those drugs bowel dysfunctions we definitely help them to have a good fiber diet and try to reduce that mobility impairment very good drug has come as a dial step we i use a lot where there is a uh, steps to improve the speed and the weakness that is dalfam predide uh which is very good drug and spasticity we all know about the baclofen isanadine clonazepam even i have given botulinum toxin in few of my ms warriors so it's a team effort in neurology we are not cardiologists we don't treat alone we have a group of people who treat them we need to help take help of urologists nurses physical therapists ot speech and language pathology psychiatrists and all other now coming to the treatment part because we almost has uh, done half an hour we have another 9 to 10 minutes so we'll try to wind up the treatment part and we'll have some questions from the audience so if you see there are glutamate acetate interferon dimethyl fumarate fingolimide teriflunamide many are injectable but many of them are oral like dimethyl fumarate and teriflunamide and fingolimide which are oral and when there were no oral and we are only given injections 15 years or 20 years back people have a very poor compliance but with the oral drug people have a good compliance but there is also a vice versa thing those who are on interferon and we shift on oral drug for just for a sake of oral and they haven't did good they want us back to the injectable because they never have relapse on that drug so you know it's very important to know what is best for your a uh, person who you are treating they you should ask him or her how you want to get treated rather than imposing your treatment on the person who is getting treated you should discuss what the person wants that it's a cost it's a disease it's a 
form of injection or the tablet. So what the disease modifying drugs do to you? They don't cure the disease. All chronic diseases, if you see, they are, there are no cure. Because even if you pl place a stent in your heart, you're opening up a heart, but you still the foreign objects are there and it's, atherosclerosis is not stopping if you are not doing the exercise and you're not keeping your, your routines good. So it is the chronic diseases, right? So you are, these are known as treatable diseases you can control. Reduce the attack of frequency and severity. You reduce the lesion in the brain and probably slow the disease progression. You don't make feel people better. You don't elevate the symptoms, but you definitely with disease modifying drug reduce the frequency and severity and they have less relapse. So how the treatment is important because you want to treat at the level of inflammation, not at the level of the axonal loss. You don't want to lose your myelin you don't want to lose that inflammation part and go into a degeneration part where the regeneration never occurs so it is important to know to treat the disease at the earliest which is known as the inflammatory phase not at the neurodegenerative phase that is why this clinical isolated syndrome is important the first symptoms in the form of the visual loss because visual loss is the one of the most common uh, sign and the symptom for the patient where patient sees nothing and doctor sees nothing because there is nothing wrong because it's the optic nerve which is involved when you do your VEP then you know that VEP is prolonged and it is a demyelination so if you have one episode the chances of the second episodes are more so treat the CIS rather than not treating it to get into a complete full-fledged MS to you so what are the treatment adherence issues and I think Amit will agree about it. There are many people who he may have come across less of knowledge, unrealistic expectations, denial of illness. How I can, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. How I can get a disease at the age of 25 or 30? Side effects, cultural factors, lack of support, disrupt of the medical community. And these are very important. So we have already done that, so I will not go into it. It's chronic unpredictable, significant irreversible damage if you don't treat early. You need emotional support, I know, but this is what the can people do to feel their best disclosure, choice of position, employment choices, financial planning. No one needs to be alone in coping with MS. Use the support system. And that is what Amit and all the MS warriors are doing their best. And what is the organization of rare disease of India is doing when I heard about the marathon which you did here in Ahmedabad. So it's an awesome work. Keep continuing those work, which are very important because we don't want to be alone. And we have all felt from last five to six months, even we are with the family in our house, we want to go around and with, with the people. That is how we are known as a social animal, right? So be aware of the common image, emotional reactions. So what are the challenges in India? Because MS, optic neuritis, is very much nearly diagnosed through the another disease that is the neuromyelitis optica which is very highly prevalent in India also. That is not very common in West, but it is very common in India. So that difference is important because treatment is totally different. If you diagnose MS and it turn out to be animal, the treatment is not interferon. It is more of rituximab. So treatment is totally different. So if you diagnose MS, the DMT's initiation is very important. Comprehensive management of MS is. So I will tell you how MS look like. See, Julia, 35-year-old. Married mother of three uh, who is exhausted all the time, can't drive because of the usual problem and numbness in his feet. Jackson, 25 year old African American man, stopped working because he cannot control his bladder. Remember what he read in the morning paper. Ah, Maria, for who falls down a lot, whose parents just told her she has MS. 47 year old Loretta, single woman who moved into a nursing home because she cannot no longer care of herself. So what MS is, is thought to be an immune system, perhaps autoimmune, and there is a scarring. That is why it is known as sclerosis. And this is what the genetic factors are. One by 750 for the general population, that is 0.1. One by 40 person in a close relative MS, that is 33 person. And in identical twins, it goes up to 25 person as genetically. 20% of the people of MS have a blood derivative of MS that is known as ACA multiplex family, where high risk in the family where several members have the disease. But about 60 years to diagnose MS is wrong. And even less than 15 years to diagnose MS directly is wrong. You have to rule out other causes because it is very less common between, it's common between 15 years to 60 years. 
and you treat, you already discussed about all these symptoms which are unpredictable and we all treat them and we talked about the, and these are the different courses. As you see, the first one, the relapsing and remitting, first relapse, complete recovery, no disability. Second relapse, you have a disability, but complete recovery. Then this compounding occurs. If you don't, if you keep your MS warriors here for 25, 30 years, they are more than happy. They are more than happy. They don't go into the secondary progressive MS. And these are both are the different diseases. So we don't go into it. So diagnose and adios for MS has gone. Now we treat them, significantly treat them with rehabilitation, with the disease modifying drugs and the symptoms. So we'll quickly, it is almost 540, five minutes more. To, these are all very technical drugs. Don't go into it. So this is how the window of opportunity has created for the MS therapy, early treatment, diagnosis, later treatment, how the course of disease has happened, how we can slow the natural course of the MS. You can see how it is important to diagnose it early and see the beauty in the 80s, mercury, typhoid vaccine, arsenic, tonsillectomy, anticoagulation were used for MS. Steroid came so late, polyunsaturated fatty acid, hyperbaric oxygen, it is that in 2000, it is not more than 20 years where the interferon come as the first drug, uh, which are proteins in the form for the treatment of MS. And that changed the world for MS because that have reduced the relapse and the disease burden for such patients. And then, and then there is a lot of research happened in MS. And now we have more than 13 drugs to treat MS. Disease modifying drug, we already discussed what they do. Interferon, glutamate acetate, Tysevery, that is known as natalizumab, alemtuzumab, but they all drug, remember, these are monoclonal antibodies. They are with side effects. We should know about it. Interferon, which is a very no, novel drug, which is a protein and which is with, with very less side effects. It's a wonderful drug. These are the theme formats which are available. Uh, beta 1A, beta 1A in the form of Revif and beta 1B, beta seron is done, not there in India. They are trying to bring that in India. So uh, natalizumab act on again on the T receptor T, T cells and decrease the burden of the disease. But we have to know that progressive multifocal leukemia and capillopathy can occur with the natalizumab. So GC virus has to be tested before giving the natalizumab. These are the oral one: dimethyl fumarate, fingoloid, uh, fingolimod. Then teriflunamide, teriflunamide, and dimethyl fumarate has taken a lot of uh um escalation as escalation therapies and they are a wonderful cytoprotective and anti-inflammatory effect fingolimod has not taken so much of repute in front of dimethyl fumarate they have not protected so much as the dimethyl fumarate and teriflunamide monoclonal antibodies one of the drug which is most effective in the secondary progressive ms also where you have recurrent relapse and you're progressing natalizumab is one of the drugs and i have a lot of experience with that it is a wonderful drug. Alentuzumab has a recurrent infection danger. They can cause even cancers. So it has to be taken care of in a very severe MS where you have to use such drug. Rutuximab is for the refractory MS where you can, it is used in myasthenia, refractory myasthenia, many other refractory diseases where you can use rutuximab. Neclizumab is a further drug which is coming up. There are a lot of other drugs. Potential role of vitamin D, we should not forget about it. A role of estradiol and smoking is a risk factor of MS. New drugs are coming, neuroprotection drugs are coming. It's a complex disease. We have to partnership with the various other factors like physiotherapy, yoga, other things which need to be, are important to reduce the disability of the disease for keeping the exercise routine and other self-management. So physiotherapy, yoga, but not those asanas which are not doing regularly. And the last word about the autologous stem cell transplantation still going on. This was about the 250 patient, which was very much encouraging. So that is what the future is about the stem cell transplantation. That is the, your own stem cells are used against uh, to uh, decrease that autoimmune attack, which is happening to you by the immunoablative uh, therapies. So 250 patients are used. The more and more further trials are coming up with this. This is a future where it can be very effective. So I'll end in the note that in the end, all that matter is my attitude and I won't let a label of any disease, multiple sclerosis, mitral stenosis, change that. So that is what important. 
an MS, manage MS for better tomorrow, multiple sclerosis, never sleep, so be cautious about it. And a last word that at this time of challenge, every place of worship was closed. And because of us, all doctors, healing and care, nurses, healthcare workers, hospital was open. Thank you very much for the patience. Thank you. Uh, I can stop sharing if you want. Yeah. I'm done with I'm my talk. You're not audible. Yeah, Hello? you're not audible. You're I'm audible now? Yes, you are. Yes. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for that informative session. I can actually vouch for that. When I actually got admitted in March of 2018, I've been under treatment from under him since. And uh, I've been taken care really well. I mean, like uh, uh, one of the good things is that uh, important is that uh, you get support from people. There is a community who uh, comes ahead and supports you in your struggle, in your battle against these diseases. Uh, doctor, I'll take you. Uh, I'll take some questions from the audience this time round. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the questions which is coming across is: uh, Do symptoms of fibromyalgia and MS overlap? NCV test shows sensory neuropathy in both lower limbs. Any relationship with MS and any cure on this? Uh, <clears throat> it's a good question because, uh, see, as I was discussing about the differential diagnosis for multiple sclerosis, uh, generally fibromyalgia is the pain tender points, like more than 16 tender points, it is diagnosed as fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia is a very non-specific disease. But you should not diagnose fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia very easily because it's a large diagnosis. You should rule out the diseases first because there are many other diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. There are many other diseases which can have such symptoms. So not only MS, you have to see the patient clinically from top to bottom, examining him, that, that person and neurologically. Then only you go for the test like nerve conduction test for sensory neuropathy. Before diagnosing the sensory neuropathy, you have to see that, that symmetry is there for sensory neuropathy or not like glob and stocking type of neuropathy what kind of neuropathy that should be some sensory loss so these are very important things see there is brain there is spinal cord there are nerves coming out of it that is why neurologists are important otherwise the mri nerve conduction has done all the work right so you have to pinpoint where the disease are and i agree with this question not ms has no correlation with fibromyalgia MS is not having any relation with sensory neuropathy, but sensory neuropathy can happen in MS when it is a very progressive course, when your spinal cord is affected, your peripheral nerves can also get affected, but primarily MS is a central nervous system disease. Okay, I hope Mayurish that was uh, answering your question. Another question which is coming from Sam Johnson, it's like presence of how many oligoclonal bands holds significance for diagnosis of MS? Two. And I tell you, these are all associated factors which are there, like doing CSF, right? CSF have oligoclonal bands, CSF have IgG index. These both the things are seen in MS, but mind you, Oligoclonal band can be positive in other autoimmune diseases, the gammopathies, the monoclonal gammopathy. There are other diseases where oligoclonal band is positive. So don't vouch only on oligoclonal band. As I told you, VP, MRI, lumbar, lumbar puncture, they all with the clinical symptoms corroborate to form MS. Okay. Uh, another question which is coming up is, uh, from the region of sclerosis affecting the brain and the spine, uh, spinal cord, uh, can be determined which area is affected. Absolutely, absolutely. When okay. we do a when we do a MS protocol, we know where the disease is. If somebody we we call it as we call it as when we teach our resident, our neurologist resident, which are there, we teach them first. We have to find where the lesion is. What is the lesion is secondary. It is it is dictum for any any disease when you're teaching uh, medicine, right? So where the lesion is to diagnose that you have to pinpoint in the neuraxis 
where the lesion is. You, so you'll examine and you can point point that it is at the T6 level or it is at the cervical level or it is the brain level. The right side of the brain is involved or the left side or is it the cerebellum which is involved? Okay. 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 Uh, I question. can take uh, one of the questions which I have from my own experience is that I initially had the symptom of uh, in 2015 January. That is a good five years ago. Uh, about more than three years ago before I got diagnosed, I had a slur in my speech. And okay. so uh, this particular thing, like there have been varying symptoms over the course of last decade or so, as you rightly mentioned, one of the most common symptoms is fatigue. One of the things which I faced in 2015 January is a slur in my speech. And then later on, I had balance issues and all the things. So these, I believe, can be determined by the MRI scan and uh, the CSF data, which is available after testing. Exactly, exactly. I mean, what you're saying is absolutely right. See, we all suffer fatigue when we run a marathon, right? Yeah. But un unexplained fatigue without any reason, having good hemoglobin and other parameters of your body are absolutely normal. And then also you are suffering a fatigue, fatigue that is known as an unexplained fatigue is important to diagnose in the form of neurology. If you have other telltale signs like um, speech difficulty, as you mentioned, right? So it is diagnosed early if you think about it early. There is uh, one more question from Mitra Jyoti, which asks that uh, does chronic weight loss is related to MS or does it require additional tests for determining whether that is the cause for it? See, see as I'm an inter internal medicine guy, I've done right. MCBS then internal medicine. So I'm an internist. Whenever you, you come to me as a chronic weight loss, and you are telling me that from two, your age is very important for me. If you are telling me that above 50 years or 40 years, you have a persistent 10 or 20 kgs of loss. First of all, I will go for the normal diseases like diabetes mellitus, thyroid. These are the condition I will check. Then I will look for the malignancy, even if it is a very good amount of weight loss with a good amount of your intake of the food. So these are, there are a spectrum of diseases where there is a weight loss, right? So we have to know that it is a vast uh, spread where the internist plays a big role before referring to us as a neurologist. And those internal medicine guys are very important for us. Okay. Uh, there's one uh, question coming from uh, Sahil, which says that you said that there is a 10% prevalence of uh, multiple sclerosis in India. Now, uh, and uh, this kind of thing exasperates uh, due to temperament, uh, temperament issues, uh, sorry, temperature issues, I would say. Ah, so yes. uh, is that the case? Like uh, in even in India, you mustn't go to any cold regions or you should, if you're living in any region which is more <coughs> humid or uh, having more temperature, then you should shift to a region which is, has a lower temperature. Is, is that recommended or is that a way of treatment? Yeah. No, no, no. That, that is a very good question. I will answer in this way. See, once you have a MS, you have a MS, right? So what is important is the sudden movement from one temperature to another that matters. If you're living in a temperature of two degrees continuously, that is no problem. But from two degrees, you are moving to a 44 degrees suddenly for four or five hours and you're not protecting, your nerves will react very badly. That is your myelin will disrupt. So that is what very important. It is not the continuous exposure. If you're living in Ahmedabad at 44, you know Ahmedabad is only two temperature, hot or very hot, right? So the people are living here, right? And MS people are living here from last 15 years and not, they are not having symptoms. But from here, they are moving suddenly to a very low temperature in a flight and they are not fully covered. See, temperature can be managed. Right. If you cover self with good at a low temperature, you will not suffer. It's the exposure which is important. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, that's another question which is coming out, Mr. Sam Johnson. Yeah. What is the significance of intaking vitamin D supplement for MS patient? That is exposure to the sunlight and all. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you are taking the sunlight exposure, it is fantastic. Definitely vitamin D has been associated in neurological disease to a lot. As such, there is a no cause and effect relationship for MS that vitamin D uh, going less causes MS. 
but it may exhibit your symptoms in the form of it helps in the myelin process. So you should keep your vitamin D in a normal range. If you keep your vitamin low, D low, you have seen that you have cognitive issues, you have memory problems. So that will exhibit is more. So you have to keep your reversible factors in a normal range. Okay. Uh... Okay, uh, the another question is that how much is yoga or exercise helpful in countering multiple sclerosis? And are there any recommended yoga practices from your side? It's a lot, I tell you. Okay. It's a lot. Exercise in the form of walking, brisk walk is very important because every form of exercise happens in that. That is known as three to four kilometers of brisk walk daily. Now coming to the yoga, yoga is very tricky. Right. When you talk about yoga, people talk about Ramdev's asanas. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about Ramdev asanas here. Yoga, if you go from there is a Hindu dand there, dand asan. You're not one day you start doing the dand asan. It is not like this. Yoga, most important thing people forget, it is related to your breathing. So those breathing exercises, your breathe, why you run, why you walk fast. Because you want to control your breathing, your tachycardia, your whole system, the autonomic symptom that is the parasympathetic and the sympathetic functions which affect your myelin is affected. If you increase your parasympathetic nature is very important in the form of yoga, doing a breathing exercises. Alone below, I have seen people coming to you, coming to me as an MS warrior and I, I ask him, show me the alone below we are doing. <laughs> yeah, man, you will well, unconscious, yaar. don't do this because you are hyperventilating. This is known as hyperventilation. So you should know the technique of doing a yoga. So yoga is a very broad term which is coming from India. And yeah. people in West made, that, made it as an exercise yoga. That is a different form of yoga which is of different format. So I'm here talking for MS patient about the breathing exercises which you calms your nerves and myelin, which is very important. Okay, last question, doctor. Uh, you talked about stem cell therapy. Is that kind of a possibility of a cure for multiple sclerosis in future? It is, yeah, very good question. It It is a promising uh, therapy, I tell you. It is a promising therapy in many neurological diseases like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, motor neuron disease. But tell you, it is initially in a very initial phase where we don't know about it. So AIMS, where I have done AIMS, PGI, I have done from PGI, they are doing the research. And I have treated one of the patients who has spent two crores in China oh. for doing a stem cell and found nothing. People are giving okay. private treatment in China and different, different places. Please don't fall prey to such treatment, which I doesn't have. It's better to do a proper form of yoga and give a money to a yoga teacher and do a breathing exercise rather than putting a money where you don't know what the results will be. Right. Right, doctor. Uh, one more question. One more question. Uh, this is like what can be uh, this is a general question. What can be done to reduce the exacerbation of this particular condition? Is there anything recommended from your side apart from? Yes, yes, yes. yes. See, MS, you know, you know that you have a disease. Even you know that you have blood pressure. So when you have a blood pressure, what do you tell yourself? I'm not to become anxious. I'm not to become uh, very much stressful. So that tensile strength of the arteries are there very hard in high, high blood pressure also, right? So what you do for high blood pressure, you have to do for MS. You have to keep going. You have to focus on your work. Stress always affects you when you take it stress from here to here. You carry that. When you carry that bag, stress affects your body symptoms. And then, then they come as an exhibition. But if stress, you stressed out with something that you are not able to join a webinar, you drop it. That is what the destiny is. You tried your best, right? So if you carry that stress, that causes MS worse than other do a routine, not in a very type A personality. Do your routine in a B type of the personality. If you are type A, try to make yourself a more, not very competitive. Competitiveness is important, but with yourself, not with the world. So these are all the factors which are important because you lose your job. You're not able to do the work. 
these are all other factors which are important where you own yourself decide upon that how you manage your surrounding area and like temperature we talked about like your workplace we talked about don't do excessive work doing a night duties regularly nobody is advised to do that Man manage that labor law kind of thing that eight hours of work because nowadays you see a lot of screen time that also affect that is also very important screen time is very important for migraine for multiple sclerosis for every disease i tell you so these are the basic norms of life which we were living before that uh, listening to the uh, coils voice in the morning we all forget about it we we'll listen to different ringtones in the morning right 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 uh, thank you doctor i think i'm still getting a lot of questions here by the way uh, but thank you for your time i mean like i hope people are able to uh, get some uh, really good medical advice and uh, about this uh, rare condition called multiple sclerosis uh, i hope uh, you get got your uh, those of uh, medical advices or uh, what can be done for prevention or how it can be countered this particular condition thank you so much doctor thank you so much dr arvind sharma for joining us thank you so much the organization of rare diseases india thank you so much swapna and mr prasanna shirod uh, mr swami also i would like to thank our uh, sponsors uh, life cell diagnostics for sponsoring this event thank you so much Thank you very much, Swapna, Amit, and Mr. Prasanna. Thank you very much, and all the audience who were there. And I like Amit to propose that take it to the next level. I am there with all of you. Thank you. If you need my services, I am there. Thank you very much. One second. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes. yes. Sir, thank you so much for being here, uh, spending your valuable time. Okay, uh, I I have uh, one last question because <laughs> about stem cell therapy. I really like uh, saying that you know there are many patients who are spending uh, uh, money and uh, not getting anything out of it. Uh, I have we have a lot of patients, especially coming from a neurological background, especially in DMD cases where parents spend. In fact, they have sold out their property and uh, you know got nothing. But uh, how do we create awareness on this and what is that we should do? Uh, is it the a lack of knowledge among the medical practitioner itself, you know, failing to educate the parents that look, nothing is there because obviously the hope has to be started from the medical practitioner. But here I tell you, because you are from the organization of the rare disease of, of India, rare disease of India, you could have a lot of genetic counselors. And I think and the I genetic think counselors the genetic for the diseases, for not the diseases, for others, for various other diseases, various other diseases. They, they are very important, they, they so you have important. to get them to, them to that and to the, the other thing is that other you should, is that make you should different programs, different programs to tell about what, like I told you, that like MS is not contagious. Not contagious. Right, so this has right. to be so spread, at a, has to be spread at a larger public platform. And we should educate the general, general physician and physician also and about it. Also about it. And most important are most important are quacks. I should not use that word. Not use that word. We should be trained. We should be trained. About. We should be informed about. Okay. Uh, the other way to look at it: Are there any specific uh, uh, conditions where stem cell therapy is available? Oh yeah. Why not? Oh yeah. Why not? You are talking about the neurology. You are talking about the neurology. It is difficult, to say. Is difficult to say. Right. Yeah. Stroke. Right. Stroke. Where I have a. Where I have a uh, detailed research. Uh, detailed research. In, is using stem cell therapy using stem and, the cell and, the and the University of Miami is using, uh, using stem, cell uh, therapy. stem cell therapy and even in Amdaban, in Amdaban, uh, Niper, uh, Niper uh, which is the central uh, branch, the central branch there, is one there is one there is one in the bedside research, research, research of stem cell, of stem cell therapy. therapy. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thanks for your time. Nice meeting you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. So I have some requests for participants. Those who have more questions, uh, kindly post it to webinar at ordindia.in and uh, we'll have it sent across to the doctor's email ID. He'll answer your questions. And uh, once he's answered your questions, we'll send it across to you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Sopna. Yeah, it was wonderful.